Purdue four straight wins against Minnesota, and in those four games, the Golden Gophers have shot better than 35% just once. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you here on the College Basketball Preview Show, brought to you by the California Almond Board. As we bring in our college basketball columnist, Gary Parrish, to do a break this down. And Gary, uh, let's, let's, let's start with Purdue here, because of course it's fluid and everything like that is it's all going to change in the next three weeks. But do you think Purdue with the wins at Ohio State, the wins at Michigan State, beating Illinois at home, has the inside track on the number one seed? Yes, and I wrote about it Friday before this weekend you know, went down. I, you know, when you looked at Villanova's upcoming schedule or the way Villanova has to close compared it to Purdue's schedule and with the way Purdue's playing, I, I wrote on Friday that I thought those two things would, would contribute to Purdue earning a number one seed. Then, of course, uh, Purdue goes out. Uh, you know, handles itself against Illinois, and Villanova takes a loss at Pitt. You know, Purdue sitting here right now wins over Tennessee, Wake Forest, West Virginia, um, two wins over Illinois, went over Wisconsin, went over Michigan State, went over Ohio State. Um, the only really bad loss at this, you know, is the Northwestern loss, of course. But even at the time, they didn't look terrible because Northwestern was playing pretty well back then. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and then here's the key. Uh, really, there's, you know, at Minnesota, that's the toughest road game left. you got Michigan State at home, Indiana at home. The Indiana one's a guarantee win. At Penn State is a guarantee win. It's just they're not going to falter. You, I don't think so, whereas, you know, Villanova still got the game, um, you know, at Syracuse. Villanova still has the Big East tournament. Uh, I, I would guess right now, I would bet right now, Purdue is the fourth number one seed. Gary, how big was it for them to get a win? Win and, a, and a big win against a good Big Ten opponent when Jawan Johnson really struggled, one of ten from the floor against Illinois. Well, it just shows them that they can do it, and, and, and that's been something that's been unclear going through the season. I mean, you know, we, we talk all the time about, you know, what does Hummel have to do this? And we always tend to come back, and most people do, to, you know, Jawan Johnson has to play. And, and, you know, for him to struggle in that game and then for them to still, you know, get out of there with a double-digit victory, it at least shows them that, look, we can do this a lot of different ways. We're obviously great when he's great, uh, but even when he's not, we can still beat a quality NCAA tournament caliber opponent. I, I think it's good from a from a, uh, a mental aspect, you know, not only for Matt Painter, but for that team to know that you know they, they can win a lot of different ways. It's something that Kentucky is learning. They can beat you in the 80s. They can beat you in the 50s. They can beat you with Wall dominating you. They can beat you with Cousins dominating you. They can beat you with Patterson hitting corner threes or DeAndre Liggins making a shot down. The, you know, uh, you know, in the final three minutes. Um, Purdue, I think, is learning that as well. They can beat you a lot of different ways. And getting that one seed, very important. Five of the last six national champions have been uh, a one seed. Gary, meanwhile for Minnesota, they got hammered in West Lafayette, lost by 19 back on January 5th. They're 500 in Big Ten play, but they have wins over Butler. They have a win over Wisconsin. They have a win on Ohio State. If they can get this game, are they back in the discussion? I don't know. I mean, they've got some work to do. I mean, the RPI is still in the 70s, and so even a win in this game is, is, is going to put them uh, in a tough spot. Then they still got to go to Illinois. Uh, the last two, I mean, at Michigan is still, there's no gimme there. I mean, they might can win it, but it's certainly not guaranteed. At home against Iowa, you probably knock that one out. they still got work to do. I mean, they want to be one of those teams that even if they get this win, they're going to go into the Big Ten tur tournament uh, very clearly needing to you know, win some games there to even get in consideration. You know, the, the problem is that, uh, you know, they didn't get a whole lot done in the non league part of the schedule. And, and, and particularly, you know, when they went through that little three game stretch where they lose to Portland on a neutral, Texas A&M on a neutral, and then at Miami. I mean, that was a tough stretch. And because you knew going into a really competitive Big Ten, um, though Minnesota was good last year, preseason top 25 this year, with some of the off the court problems that caused suspensions, they weren't going to be a team that was going to be able to overwhelm anybody t from a talent perspective. In other words, they were going to take some losses they have and I'm just afraid they didn't get enough done in the non-league to, to overcome that. All right, very important game for the Gophers to get uh, at Williams Arena. We'll see if they do uh, this coming week. Gary Parrish, thank you very much, sir. We'll talk to you soon, bud. Thanks, guys. All right, folks, for more on this game, keep it right here with CBSSports.com and don't forget the College Basketball Preview Show brought to you by the California Almond Board. Become a pro snacker this season with a handful of California almonds. For Gary Parrish, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.